Hello my darlings, it's Zui here and today I'm giving you a Kirishima X Bakugo fanfiction and listeners there as well. Uh, this is not a continuation of, uh, you know, 14 minutes in heaven and, uh, you know, sexy hot spring, whatever that one was called. Um, it's its own thing, so to speak, and I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. As a matter of fact, I finished this one in like two hours, so I'm sorry if you don't like it. <laughs> but regardless of that, if you still like it, please remember to watch the video until the end, like or dislike, and comment something down below. This way you enhance my standing in the YouTube algorithm, which is very important, as this means that more people will watch my videos. So again, please remember to do that. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Also, sharing the video around will never hurt. Just share my video, even if even if it's like in a Discord that is completely unrelated to Boku no Hero, you can post it there, because even a hater would be nice, because a hater would dislike the video, which, hey, is one of the things you can do to actually support me. All right, let's get right into it, shall we? The Hero School UA was probably the most prestigious high school in Japan. It allowed many students to become heroes with an army of admirers. Everyone came here for different reasons, primarily money. Heroes were essentially paid for showing off and brawling with other people at superpowers. In a way, it was like a reawakening of the gladiatorial combat of old. A show. You were one of the few people who understood the spectacle behind it. Admittedly, it took away some of the magic, if not all. But the money was great. And your quirk was flashy enough to attract people. Your quirk stained glass allowed you to refract your light and even gather it within you. Which allowed you to collect energy from the sun and release it for powerful heat blasts. Which, of course, meant that you aced the entrance exam of UA for the hero course. It was your second year at UA, and lucky for you, today was a beautiful late spring day. You were lying on the grass in the garden. The gardening club had been taken care of the past year, trying to take a nap. It was so peaceful. Some birds were tweeting in a tree a few meters away from you, and the smell of early lavender was making you drowsy. But best of all, today you had finished an important test, so for now, you had smooth sailing. Smooth sailing. And you could feel your mind drifting off to sleep, when suddenly, a pair of heavy footsteps interrupted your solitude. You bit your lower lip in frustration, but remained in your sleeping position, just in case the person intruding on you was a member of the gardening club getting something out of the tool shed. Sadly, they weren't, as a shadow appeared above you, forcing you to open your eyes. A grinning face was the first thing you saw, it belonged to your classmate, Kirishima. <sighs> what do you want? He didn't answer and just sat down on the ground next to you. Enjoying the sun? He asked. There was an awkward tone in his voice. and You rolled on your side. What do you want? You really had no patience right now. Not for his little games. Just... Making conversation. You blinked in irritation. And to ask you something. You sat up, giving him your full attention. You know asking me stuff can be costly, right? You have been known in UA student underground that you did certain favors in exchange for money. Nothing sexual, of course. Mostly doing homework or beating up bullies for the first years. Kirishima scratched the back of his head and blushed. I need a girlfriend. You blinked and snorted. <laughs> As if. 
You laid back down, but Kirishima was persistent. It, it would only be just for like 20 minutes. And just every once in a while. You sighed deeply and sat back up. Look, dude. Are you this desperate for a GF? That you would pay me for it? For like 20 minutes a day? And no. You can't pay me enough to touch your... No, 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 no. He interrupted. You don't understand. You scoffed. Fine. Hit me. Now you're interested. What silly excuse would he give you? The redhead inhaled deeply. The rumors are true with me and Bakugo. He whistled. <laughs> Shit! I owe me another ten bucks and a kiss now. Kirishima chuckled. <laughs> well, uh, the hard ones, what the hard ones. Now he blushed even harder. But you still didn't quite understand what was going on. But if you and Katsuki are together, why do you want me to be involved in it? Wait, did the goblin tell you about the bed and you want me to get out of it? You grinned, feeling a slight glimmer of hope that you might not actually have to kiss him. You liked that thought a lot. But the boy shook his head. You do with the little perv whatever you want. I just need you for an alibi. You blinked. Alibi? Alright, I bite. Tell me. Kishima inhaled sharply before speaking up. My parents, more specifically my mom, is... are... well... they're very conservative. While my dad has said he doesn't care as long as I don't end up homeless, I... No, for a fact, if my mom were to know about Pakugu and me, she'd flip out. That explained a few things, but not everything. Since we are living in dorms right now, I thought I could, you know, be me. Just, the problem is... You grinned, understanding the situation. The problem is your parents want to see your little girlfriend with their own eyes, right? Kishima sighed heavily and pulled out his phone. After unlocking, he showed you a text message. Katsuki and I have a deal. On one date I pay and on the next he pays and so on, but I don't get that much money from my parents to begin with, so... He put his phone back in his pocket. So you told your parents you got a little girlfriend and you need to pay for your dumb little dates to go on, right? Yeah. He combed through his hair with one hand in desperation. Didn't know people still had problems with guys like you and Bakugo. I thought the fun thing to hate now were people with silly mutation quirks. Kishima shrugged. Oh. You chuckled. <laughs> like that one French news reporter with a fish head. You and Kishima burst into laughter. He does have a nice voice though said Kirishima, for you two calm down. Well, that he does, you admitted. Sure, fine, you finally said after thinking it over. I'll be your little girlfriend. The boy smiled widely, but his smile immediately faltered. You made a dramatic pose like a dying diva. I'm just... So short on money, and I just love presents. Kishima grinned. Well, let's go on. He made quotation marks with his fingers. A date after you meet my mom, and then I get you something nice. You rolled on your side with a devious grin to look at him. Okay, that sounds agreeable. Just one more thing. And that would be? Why did you come to me? For you know I could decline and would now have something in my hand to use against you. The redhead chuckled darkly. Well, I must admit, Bakugo and I discussed this for a while and after Kaminari told us you'd kiss people for money, you scoffed. I don't 
no, I don't. That's just a rumor. I do homework, beat up bullies, and connect people with people who have connections. Kishima blinked in confusion. Before shrugging it off. Anyways, I can't ask Ora cause she could not handle the pressure and would probably fuck it up. Can't ask Momo, she's too rich. And I can't ask Jiro because she already has a boyfriend. And then we thought about you. You snorted. <laughs> so Mina and Takekura didn't even come up. The boy sighed and laid down, his hands behind his head. Mina was an idea I had, but my parents already know her too much. As just a friend, you know. And to be honest, it would be too awkward making her do it. You shrugged. You really were the only option here. Fine by me, then. Let's arrange payments later. Just tell me what I have to do. A few days later, you were sitting in the back seat of a car owned by Bakugo's dad. With Katsuki at the driver's seat and Kirishima in the passenger seat. So, like, Bakugo's parents are fine with you too? You asked, and Bakugo grunted in response. My mom said she's expected it. Eh, my mom said she expected it. Dad was like, only if you adopt a kid at some point. He uh, really is in love with the thought of being a granddad, you know. Remember, said Kirishima, you stay in the car, and I go with her to the door, say hi to my parents, and we drop her off at the mall. Bakugo sighed impatiently. And then we enjoy our evening at the cinema. I got it. Finally, the three of you arrived at a rather beautiful one-family home in the suburbs. Kishima guided you through a big front lawn that had wonderfully smelling flowers growing in it. The entire scene looked like it was taken out of a picture book. You never told me you live in the suburbs. You mumbled to the redhead who was awkwardly holding your hand. While Bakugo eyed you jealously from the car. Well, they moved here after they opened the dorm, so technically I never lived here myself. You rang the doorbell and after a short wait, a black-haired Amazonian woman opened the door. Your jaw almost dropped. She was buff. Hey, mom, said Kirishima with a blush. Oh my, is that your little friend? She said with a toothy grin. Her teeth were dangerously sharp, just like the redheads, and she towered over the both of you. Her voice on the other end was unfittingly high-pitched, like that of a fourteen-year-old girl. Yeah, hi, Mrs. Kirishima, you said awkwardly. Come in, you two, she said cheerfully, but... Kirishima interjected. No, 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 we, we, we just drop by to say hello and, you know, get some money for the cinema. Kirishima's mother now eyed the car with the angrily scowling Bakugo behind the wheel. And who's that? Kirishima blushed hard and quietly yelped. With a confident smile, you stepped in front of his mother. That is my brother Katsuki. He's driving us. Uh, he and his girlfriend are meeting at the mall today, too, so he suggested to drive me and Kiri to the cinema as well, since it's on the way. Kirishima's mother smiled proudly. That's very energy efficient. She's a good catch, Ejiro. Yeah. The redhead start. The redhead stared at you in disbelief. Just... One second, E.G., I get you your money, said the woman before vanishing in the building. How did you come up with that lie so fast? whispered Kirishima into her ear. I'm a natural. Just remember it so when we use it again at some point. I'm a natural. Just remember it so we can use it again at some point. After you two received the money and returned to the car, the atmosphere changed to relief. I can't believe she brought it, 
said Kirishima with a heavy sigh. Bakugo, on the other hand, just growled in approval. And you? You were just happy you got some money out of it. But maybe you could get just a little bit more out of this deal. Hey, you said with a smug grin. I'm pretty sure she'd appreciate us taking a few selfies. This earned you a dumbfounded look from the redhead. As a wave of anxiety crashed over him. He hasn't thought of that. Aw, no worries. Darling, you said. Five bucks per picture. Bakugo laughed. <laughs> now she got you by the balls, dude. <laughs> Is there anything else we can do? Bakugo blinked. Don't drag me into this. You shrugged, and your smug grin turned toothy. <laughs> Let me watch you two kiss, then. The boys looked at each other in confusion, and you licked your lips expectantly. Then Kirishima raised one hand to Katsuki's cheek, softly rubbing over the blonde skin with his thumb. I mean, she's asking for it. Bakugun knew that this was something they shouldn't be doing right now. But he leaned forward regardless, pressing his soft lips onto the other boy's lips. You blushed, not expecting them to actually do it. Bakugun groaned as the wet kissing noises became louder, and you suppressed a squeak. Uh, okay, guys, I, I, I get it. Honestly, I I was just joking, you know. This was probably the hottest thing you had ever seen. 